Hello and welcome to News Click's show, Mapping Fault Lines, where we look at geopolitical issues across the world. Today we are going to be looking at a very different kind of fault line. December 30th marks the first anniversary of the WHO declaring COVID-19 as a public health emergency of international concern. Now, one year later, we see the numbers. Over 90.8 million doses of the vaccine or various vaccines have been delivered across the world. Over the year, a lot of questions have been raised on the kind of global order that has emerged out of this pandemic about the WHO itself, about the distribution of vaccines, about the relationships between countries on this. And we have with us Prabir Prakashta to talk about this. Prabir, thank you so much for joining us. So first of all, the key question here is vaccines. As we see, this chart does not paint a very inspiring picture because, of course, the data is not available for many countries. But nonetheless, it doesn't really look like a large number of people across the globe are close to getting the vaccines or are getting these vaccines, whereas some sections are really getting them in large numbers. So could you first maybe take us through the kind of dynamics of this distribution of vaccines right now? Let's take a little step back and look at the pandemic itself in the last one year. We are now approaching one million uh, deaths. We also see that even in the United States, where according to this map, vaccines are getting increasingly available, or in UK, for instance, or in the European Union, that the numbers of infected are still high. So in fact, the US still has the highest number of infected per day, new cases, and the UK is pretty high on that list too. So that is one part, that the pandemic still is raging in different parts of the world. And we recently have, for instance, cases of new variants emerging, and we don't know to what extent the existing vaccines will work or to the extent they will work. I think they will work, but with maybe different levels of efficacy, given the fact that vaccine versus uh, viruses is going to be an evolutionary war. So that is one part of it. And it's also very clear that without vaccines, the so-called herd immunity is not going to emerge. So all this Barrington Declaration, et cetera, et cetera, has been going around. People in India are saying maybe Delhi has herd immunity. All this is clear now that this is only cyclical up and down of the numbers. And if we don't have vaccines, the numbers can again surge in different parts at different points of time. This is the nature of the epidemic. It's not that this is something unusual. This is what happens in all epidemics. And this is because in human terms, the human interactions and the virus inter interactions cannot be defined in, a, in this particular way. Oh, you know, everything is fine because the numbers are coming down. So this is the general picture within which we are talking about the distribution of vaccines. Now, as you can see, it's very clear that countries have secured vaccines, have placed orders on vaccines, while other countries have none. This is the general picture. And of course, the hardest hit are, for instance, African countries, which don't seem to be getting access to vaccines readily. As you can see, the, Africa is, uh, the, the entire African continent is virtually uh, without at least known deliveries of vaccines. Some vaccines, yes, but most countries don't seem to be having access to vaccines right now over there. There are, of course, outliers that India might be otherwise not the richest of countries, but India has strong vaccine manufacturing uh, companies, so India seems to be slightly better placed in that. We also have Brazil, which the pres president has been strongly against the Chinese vaccines. But the point is the only vaccines Brazil should, seems to be readily getting access to is the Chinese vaccines. So it seems now they have reconciled themselves in spite of their opposition to China. And uh, Bolsonaro being firmly with the Trump administration's positions, accepting that if they have to vaccinate the people, they have to accept Chinese vaccines. So there is a mixed picture on that, but it's very clear when you look at the other picture which you have here. Can you go to the next slide? If we look at this slide, which you have, this shows very clearly that countries have, some have 200, 300% the number of vaccines they need because they have taken a bet where the vaccines were being developed. And some countries have, compared to the population, have maybe 5%, 10%, some none. This is the global scenario that is emerging. And we have, it, it has given rise to what has been termed in different uh, ways vaccine nationalism. I will go a step further and will say vaccine grabbing. And in the free for all, those of financial muscle 
are cornering the market, in fact, having surplus vaccines, though they're not able to distribute it. They have those vaccines blocked, booked, but they're not able to distribute it at the moment because the delivery systems are still not functioning. That's a different story altogether. But it's clear that vaccines, the vaccine distribution, vaccine, vaccine access is completely inequitable. And under these conditions, we are likely to see the continuation of the pandemic. Absolutely. Right. In this context, Prabir, of course, there's a World Health Organization which has its own vaccine initiative as well. And we see that it has been severely underfunded, has not been getting the kind of contributions it deserves. And this also takes us to the other question of the WHO itself. We know what the Trump administration did. They announced a withdrawal. Biden has, of course, said that they'll come back, said that they will, the US has joined the COVAX initiative as well. But nonetheless, we do see that a global initiative which should have helped in delivering vaccines to the poorer people, it remains massively underfunded as of now. And this also probably has, so how do, what does this reflect on the state of global health administration, so to speak? I think there are two issues. One is, of course, a simple question of equity. That, okay, you've got money, so you get more of the vaccines, we understand that. But at least give some money to those countries who otherwise will not have access to the vaccines. And that was thought to be solved by the co-vaccine initiative, which WHO had supported, which also had philanthropic funds coming into it. The real cynical part of all this is a small fraction of the money they're spending on their own vaccine procurement. A small fraction of, it would, of that would have really funded the vaccine initiative the WHO had supported. So as of date, they need at least 2 billion doses to fund, to give vaccines to 1 billion people, which will be about 20% of the population of these countries, which don't have access or don't have the resources. So that also, uh, at the moment, they really have not been able to do, fulfill that target. In fact, the way short of the target. So that is one part of it, that it's completely underfunded. But this is only one part of the picture. There's another part of the picture, which is this is not enough. This is just for procuring the doses. But you also need to be able to build the cold chain and deliver it to the people and also provide for the jabs. You need equipment for doing that. All of that requires extra funds. And WHO's Act Accelerator program, which it has supported, thinks that it needs about 60 to 70 billion dollars equivalent. It's about, I think 68 billion dollars is what it has said it requires to be able to do that. Neither is that forthcoming. That, that also hasn't happened. So even vaccines are available. Even then, delivering it to the people who need it is not going to happen. If that happens, what it means is pandemic is going to continue in different parts of the world. And if pandemic does continue in different parts of the world, if you cannot control it, then what happens to those countries which think they're protected because they've vaccinated themselves comes up. And here are the two issues, which has also been said by various agencies. One is a simple public health issue that given the fact that new viruses are emerging continuously, if we do not stop it all over the world, the pandemic will really not stop. It will at best have lower surges, lower uh, numbers of infected, but it will still continue. So we need to tackle this as a worldwide problem, not as a in each individual country uh, looking after themselves. And that's where the word vaccine nationalism really emerged from. That vaccine nationalism doesn't solve the global public health problem. And secondly, what now the IMF to International Chamber of Commerce have started saying, that this is a global problem. And if we do not solve it globally, then neither will the economies of the world recover. Pandemic will continue. Will, uh, the, the global economy will not recover. And interestingly, what they have also shown, because the global economy is interconnected today, the rich countries procure materials, including finished goods from various other countries, but also produce goods which they didn't sell back to other countries. So this whole chain, there's a backward forward linkage. And if the countries which are suffering from the pandemic still continues to do so, then the economic supply chain as well as the selling, both these get affected. The economies of the advanced countries will not recover either. So interestingly, what they have now started saying in this enlightened self-interest, 
and very crudely actual self-interest of these countries, it is necessary that the countries which are rich also provide for vaccination of the countries which are not. And instead of grabbing all the vaccine, they should try and see there is an e at least some equitable distribution of the vaccine. And their calculations are very simple. They have shown through uh, what are called partial equilibrium models. I'm not going to get into that. Or, you know, the input-output come equilibrium models. What their model shows that if you take the major flows of commodities and if these are affected because of the pandemic. Then, best case scenario, the, the rich countries would still need, will lose a significant part of their uh, ability to produce goods, both in terms of raw materials and their markets. And if we take that into account, that outstrips by far the amount they will have to spend. Again, the calculations are there. You can see it, what the International Chamber of Commerce has produced. IMF has also indicated that this is interesting because these are by no means the voices of a liberal, uh, shall we say, public health uh, voice, uh, voices speaking. Right. This is not WHO, which could be argued has always had a stake in public health or different kinds of left or social democratic or even liberal opinion, which has always talked about public health. This is the stern face of capitalism, which is IMF or it is the National Chamber of Commerce, the business of the club of the rich, of the rich companies, who are saying, and it's interesting to see how they are framing it, that is in the, it's the interest of big capital, rich countries, to actually support the vaccines and the vaccine initiative in different parts of the world. If they don't do that, their economic recovery will also not take place. So, you know, if you remember the United States, the famous slogan under Ronald Reagan was that public health is equal to socialist medicine, and therefore it is to be opposed in favor of private health care. And you had at the time the slogan of better dead than red, which was their slogan. Of course, it was in respect to nuclear weapons, but this is in, in some sense now the IMF as well as uh, uh, the International Chamber of Commerce, promoting public health, quote unquote, socialized medicine or socialist medicine. Maybe they need to reinvent the slogan as better red than dead. Absolutely. Thank you, Prabir, so much for talking to us. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching News Click.